Let us pray. Heavenly Father, oh merciful God, we thank you for a beautiful day that you've created. We thank you for this Sunday morning, for this is truly the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Lord, open our hearts and minds to receive your word today. Lord God, to accept it, Lord God, as it is the truth of the word of God and applies to our lives all times, all centuries, all circumstances. We commit this time to you in the awesome name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, welcome, my brethren, to a fine Sunday morning. It's a bit breezy out here this morning and a bit loud as there's a commotion going on all around us. So I'll try and speak loudly so hopefully there won't be interference as we speak today about the Word of God as we've been talking about increasing the Spirit of God in our lives. We've looked at that over the last few Sundays. And we know that when we increase the Spirit and the Spirit increases in our lives, then we shall not gratify the desires of the flesh. We walk by the Spirit. And we talked about being renewed in our minds, thinking about things that are holy, righteous, and praiseworthy, setting our mind on things above where Christ is seated. Well, want to uh, continue with our conversation uh, today. We also talked about, of course, the last few weeks about uh, other ways to increase the Spirit of God in our lives. We talked about spending time reading, meditating, and applying the Word of God to our lives. The Word of God is a light to our path. Uh, immerse ourselves in prayer. We saw that the prayer of the righteous is powerful. Amen. Amen. Thank God for that. And we talked about last week about spending time in fellowship, first with God and then with one another as we walk together in the light of God's kingdom. And knowing that we are made righteous in Jesus Christ and we can truly call Jesus our King, our Lord, and our Savior. We are transferred from Satan's domain of darkness to Jesus' kingdom of glorious light and uh, where we can walk by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. We pick up our cross each day and we follow Jesus as the Spirit of God lights the path for us. As you can see today, beautiful day, a great example of lighting the path for us. We can see where we're walking, we can see where we're going, we will not stumble, we will not fall. Praise God for that. When we walk in the Spirit, we bear the good fruit then of the Spirit as well. And we learned, of course, that from Galatians, the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such things there is no law. And those that are in Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh and his affections and lusts. We live in the Spirit, let's walk in the Spirit as well. And Jesus, our King, we saw has a kingdom. And right now it's a spiritual kingdom within. One day Jesus will return to establish his kingdom, his physical kingdom, where he will reign supreme king of kings and lord of lords. And, and, and um, we saw that we belong to Jesus. We've been transferred to his kingdom of life. Sin no longer has any mastery over us. We've been set free from the power of sin. And today we want to talk about then what life is like walking in the kingdom of God. See, it's one thing to be set free and to, be, and to be transformed. And we see the path lit for us now. We want to talk about living life in the kingdom of God. And this life in Satan's domain is um, a life of righteousness. Satan's domain right now because of sin, unrest, and despair. We want to talk about what life is like in the kingdom. Well, we know that in Satan's domain, unrighteousness prevails because of sin, unrest, and despair. Not very appealing, but that's the reality of many people are caught in today, looking, desperately wanting a way out of it. And Jesus has been here all along with a simple message, and he says that in Matthew's Gospel, Come unto me, all ye all that are labor and are heavy laden, I will give ye rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy, my burden is light. It's a simple message, but hard for many to accept. And why is that, we wonder? Well, we find in 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, in whom the God of this world, speaking of Satan, 
God's small g. He's not really a God, but he says Satan's domain here. This he has blinded the minds of them who which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So Satan's blinded the minds of those who would not believe. And that's why we as preachers speak the word of life. We find in 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus, Lord, and ourselves for as servants for Jesus' sake, for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. And Jesus has a kingdom and it brings freedom. It's a kingdom we need to let him rule. That's why we humbly submit to his authority and we follow him because he has redeemed us from the death penalty of sin, has given us access to his glorious kingdom we we're willing to forsake everything for it and today we're going to talk about life in the kingdom here and now today as it applies today and why is this kingdom so glorious that I'm willing to forsake everything for it well let's begin our journey into kingdom living we want to start Matthew's gospel chapter 6 verse 31 through 33 uh, Jesus says therefore take no thought saying what shall we eat what shall we drink Wherefore shall we be clothed for these things the Gentiles seek, and for your heavenly Father knowest that you need these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all of these things will be added unto you. And Romans, Paul writes, chapter 14, verse 17, the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. So the first thing to note here is what the kingdom of God is not. It's not self-focused. In other words, it's not about me. God's kingdom is not about me. What shall I eat? What shall I wear? What shall I drink? God says he knows you need these things. He says, seek first his righteousness, his kingdom. The kingdom of God is not about you and me. It's about Jesus, the king of the kingdom. It's about him. And this is a crucial understanding that many people think the gospel is, is the good news about Jesus and getting saved and going to heaven. With that thinking, Jesus becomes somebody who just gives us things we want rather than allowing to provide us things that we really need. When the gospel is about us, we become the center of our world and the idea of picking up our cross each day and following Jesus becomes optional. And when it's optional, we can pick and choose the verses in scripture we like forsake the ones that we don't see when the gospel becomes about Jesus we're willing to give up everything including our own lives in order to follow him it's his kingdom that's why it's so important to understand life is not about satisfying ourselves with clothing and food and drink and and all the fleshly desires of this earth it's about being clothed in righteousness feasting on Jesus who's the bread of life and drinking the living water that comes through Jesus where we never thirst again. And the kingdom of God is about Jesus. It's not about us. When it's about Jesus, we get to experience everlasting, abundant life in the kingdom. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's about righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is first about righteousness. Righteousness speaks about being right with God. Matthew writes, chapter 5, verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. In the beginning of time, God established his rule. The first man and woman walked with God, but we saw in Genesis things quickly changed. We see in Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord hath made. And he said to the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the tree of the fruit, the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, Ye shall not eat it, neither shall ye touch it, yes, ye shall die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. You see the Satan's deception already taking place. And he says, For God does not know that in a day ye eat of it, then knowing your eyes shall be open, ye shall be gods, knowing good and evil. 
And when the woman saw the tree was good for food, it was pleasant to her eyes, the tree desired to make her one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did it, and gave also unto her husband, and he did eat also. See, from the very beginning, the sin has plagued mankind. At the providence of God, in due time, he provided a deliverer. And we find in John's Gospel, chapter 1, verse 29, it says, The next day John, speaking to John the Baptist, seeth Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God that take away the sin of the world. And John the Baptist spoke about Jesus taking away the sin of the world. Interesting here, John didn't say sins of the world. He said the sin of the world. See, our, our sins can be summed up in this sin, which is desire to be our own gods. That's what happened to Adam and Eve when they sinned first entered the world. They wanted to be their own gods. Satan tried to twist things and said, you could be your own God, and so they saw it was desirable. They were deceived by Satan because of their desire to be gods. They chose to eat of the forbidden fruit. The sin to be your own God has plagued mankind ever since. Our sin makes us unrighteous. It separates us from God. It's a treasonous act when we want to be our own king. When Jesus truly is the king, and the penalty for that treason? Well, we find in Romans chapter 6, verse 23, the wages of sin is death. That's the penalty for treason against Jesus' kingdom is death. Treason against the king is a death penalty. The only way to be delivered from the death penalty is a pardon from the king. In 1 John's, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8 through 9 says, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves. The truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. In Romans 6, 23, find the second part of that verse. It says, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And we find in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 21, Paul writes, Therefore, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation to it that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the words of reconciliation. Now then, we, as ambassadors of Christ, as though God beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. The righteousness of God we are made in Jesus, Jesus Christ, King of kings, and he has a kingdom. The way to enter the kingdom is through Jesus' sacrificial death on the cross, his shed blood for the forgiveness of sins, his resurrection on the third day, overcoming death in the grave. And because Jesus lives, we also live a new life in him. Hallelujah. And praise God for that. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, for he, God has made him, Jesus, to be sin for us, who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. And Paul writes in Romans chapter 8, verse 1 and 2, Therefore there is no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. In Christ Jesus, we are made right with God. We are right in God through Jesus Christ, our Savior. We enter his glorious kingdom with Jesus Christ as our king. The Spirit of God placed in us, we then walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. And by walking the Spirit, we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. The good fruit of the Spirit is now what we bear. The kingdom of God is not meat and drink. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. The kingdom of God is is about righteousness, peace, and joy in and and, and the Holy Ghost. That's what it's about. So the kingdom of God is right. And why is this kingdom so glorious that I'm willing to forsake everything for it? No condemnation. Being right with God. It's praiseworthy. 
Hallelujah. I'm going to forsake everything. No condemnation. And John's Gospel, chapter 8, verse 36 says, If the Son, therefore, shall set, make you free, you shall be free indeed. Free to do what? To live the life God has intended in fellowship where we walk with Him. Being right with God makes me a son of God as well, and also an ambassador of Jesus Christ, His appointed representative to the nations. To the nations. Romans chapter 8, verse 14 through 18 says, For as many are led by the Spirit of God, they are sons of God. Ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear. Ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereabout we cry, Abba, Father, God, my Father, my Dad, Amen. The Spirit himself beseeches, beareth, the Spirit himself beareth witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and of children and heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if be so be we suffer with him, they also be glorified with him. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. And not only that, my brethren, 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 8 through 9 says, For ye were sometimes darkness, but now you are, you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And we find also, going back, Moses wrote these words to the nation of Israel that are so relevant for us today. He, and he spoke of, and, and, of to the nation, and today, us, a holy nation, made right in Jesus, these words are so relevant as well. Moses wrote this in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, he writes, And the Lord, he hath doth go before thee, he will be with thee, he will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, fear not, neither be dismayed. The blessings of being right with God, while walking after Jesus in his glorious kingdom of light, when we leave this earth as described by Apostle Paul, he says, Paul says this, he wrote this to Timothy in his second letter. Paul was at the end of his life, and, and Paul wrote to Timothy and said, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me on that day. And not to me only, but to all them that also loved his appearing. Someday, for the righteous, those on earth now, someday, a crown of righteousness laid up before us in eternity with God. Hallelujah. With a God who will never leave us nor forsake us. Amen. Amen. What's well, a good word for us today, my brethren? The light of God shining upon us on a beautiful sunny day. The God who will never leave us nor forsake us. The kingdom of God is not about meat or drink. The kingdom of God is not satisfying our, our fleshly desires. God knows what we need. But the kingdom of God is righteousness, it's peace, it's joy in the Holy Ghost. And we looked at today about some of the things about righteousness. The kingdom of God is about being right with God through Jesus Christ. And next week, we'll look at another piece of this, we'll look at peace. What it's like to experience peace here and now. And this is a lasting and eternal peace we can find with God. How fantastic and glorious is that, my brethren? We surely need some peace right now. So next week we'll look at that. So once again, I want to give God the praise and the glory for this day. I trust that this Word of God has spoken to your heart and mind today. And um, I trust you'll have a wonderful rest of your Sunday. Seek the Lord, be in prayer, transform by the ruining of your mind, get in the Word of God, it's the light to your path, fellowship first with God, walk in fellowship with fellow believers in the light of God's glorious kingdom. The Spirit of God will increase in your life. Dwelling on the fact we are made righteous in Jesus Christ, you enter God's glorious kingdom. Again, we'll look at next week, starting again with peace. May God bless you, and we'll talk to you again next week.